turning overseas now to Iran, reportedly readying its response against Israel for striking its consulate in Syria. ABC's Britt Clinton joins us live from Tel Aviv with more on that. Good morning to you, Britt. Good morning, Janae. Yeah, Israel is on high alert. The U.S. warning an Iranian attack on Israel could come as soon as this weekend or next week. This morning, threats of an Iranian attack on Israel escalating. A U.S. official telling ABC News Iran could retaliate as soon as this weekend or next week following the attack on an Iranian consulate building in Syria that killed a top commander. The official saying Tehran could strike an Israeli diplomatic facility or possibly even a direct attack on Israeli territory. The heightened regional tension as Israel faces backlash from the world's central kitchen over its investigation into Monday's deadly aid worker attack and urging an independent investigation, saying the IDF cannot credibly investigate its own failure in Gaza. The charity adding that Israel's apologies are cold comfort for the seven victims, which include a U.S. Canadian citizen. The IDF firing two officers in the wake of their own probe, admitting to a terrible chain of errors. The strike on the aid vehicles is a grave mistake, stemming from serious operational failures, mistaken classification and identification, errors in decision making. This as Israel announces it will open the areas crossing in northern Gaza as well as a port to allow more aid in. But the steps to open up additional aid routes fall short of addressing the White House calls to protect aid workers. Several aid groups have paused operations out of safety concerns following the attack. Human Rights Watch program director Sari Bashi telling me the U.S. needs to take its pressure on Israel a step further. What President Biden should do is suspend arms transfers to the Israeli military until such time as the Israeli military complies with international humanitarian law. And guys, the IDF just confirming that the body of Elad Katsu was retrieved from southern Gaza overnight and taken back to Israel. And now this is the president calls on the leaders of Egypt and Qatar to press Hamas for a hostage release deal. Janae. All right, Britt, thank you. And tomorrow morning on This Week, Martha Raditz will have an exclusive interview with World Central Kitchen founder Jose Andres, who has been very outspoken. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.